Do you believe in God? Mm. <laughs> well, let me, ask, right you a different, let me ask you a different question. question then. Do you, do you think there is a God? Oh, I'm terrified that there might be. Does Jordan Peterson believe in God? As someone who's consumed a lot of his content, I would have assumed the answer would be pretty obvious. Of course he does. But in a recent interview with Piers Morgan, his answer shocked the audience. Stay tuned to the last clip where he goes deeper in on his faith and gives a sobering challenge to Christians. I want to talk to you about your, your new book, We Who Wrestle With God. Yep. A lot of your fans, there's all yep. sorts of Jordan Peterson groups that you can join who debate whether you really believe in God or not. So let's just get it on the table. Do you believe in God? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think that's any of, I don't think that's anybody's business. I think it's the most private question you can ask someone, but then I would say also, uh, what's the right response to that? By their fruits, you will know them. How's that? Well, that's let me ask, right you, a different, let me ask you a different question, question then. Do you, do you think there is a God? Oh, I'm terrified that there might be, Pierce. How's that? Jordan says you will know them by their fruits. What does he mean? He's taking this phrase from Matthew 7, 16, where it's talking about being aware of false prophets. It means don't just listen to what somebody's saying about themselves, but see how they act, and that will reveal who they truly are and what they truly believe. So Jordan says, stop asking me this question and just see how I live my life. That will reveal the answer. And that makes sense in a lot of ways. Then he goes on to say that he's terrified that there might be a God. And while this provides a good chuckle to all those around, this is a sobering reality. And Peterson is aware of that. Think about it. If there is a God, that means he is sovereign, you're not. That means it's his story, not yours. It means it's his morality, not yours. That you're accountable to him and that we've all fallen short because we none of us have kept his standard. And that leaves us guilty before a good and holy God. That is a terrifying thought. The Bible does say that God will not be mocked. And although he holds back his wrath for a season, one day there will be judgment. And the Bible also says that we all know God exists, but we suppress that truth in our unrighteousness. The reality of God is a terrifying truth for those who have yet to know him. Before we get back into the video and get to the next clip, I just want to encourage you to like this video and subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. This channel is supported by my friends on Patreon. This is my full-time gig, guys. This is how I provide for my family. This is my heart. This is my mission to equip people to follow Jesus daily. If that's a mission you want to get behind and support me in what I'm doing, I'd encourage you to click the link in my description and sign up to Patreon today. Now, on to the video. And I, you know, I'm not trying to be a smart ass when I'm making that comment either. Like they say, it's an, old, it's an Old Testament saying, I believe that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And that's actually, that is actually about as true a statement as you could manage in such a short phrase. And, you know, people have congratulated me. I was at the Buckley Institute last night. They were congratulating me on my courage. And I think, and I said this last night, it's like, you guys don't understand. It has nothing to do with courage. I'm just afraid of different things than the people who lie. Many people these days approach God with a consumeristic mentality. What can I get from God? How can God improve my life? And correspondingly, people that pitch Jesus to folks, they promote him as, you know, a, a life betterment program. He'll make your life better. He'll give you what you truly want. He'll make your dreams come true. But Peterson comes from a very different angle. Now for us, we get nervous when people start talking about the fear of God. We like to water it down and say, no, that's just like respect it's not like fear we're not scared of god it's like just respect we respect him but peterson puts into words what the scripture speaks of when it talks about the fear of god matthew 10 28 says and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell my question for you is do you fear god that much i have to ask myself that do i actually fear god peterson opened up further about his belief in god and i want you to pay attention to the last part of this clip because when i saw it I had to take a long, hard look at myself in the mirror as a Christian. Is what you believe what you say or what you act out? Now, you know, I would say to some degree it's both, but if push comes to shove, as far as I'm concerned, what you believe is what you act out, not what you say. And then, you know, and if you're an integrated person, then what you act out and what you say are the same thing, and then you're a person whose word can be trusted, right? Because what you say and what you do are isomorphic. They're the same thing. But it, belief is instantiated in action. So I, I, I have also suggested that I act as if I believe in God, or to the best of my ability. And uh, 
people aren't very happy with that either, but let's say you say you do believe in God. Say, I believe in God. It's like, okay, well, that's hypothetically pretty impressive, I would say. It's like you believe that there's a divine power that oversees everything that is fundamentally ethical, that's watching everything you do, and, um, and you believe that. And so what effect does that have on your behavior, if, if you believe it? Are you all in on your beliefs? Are you sacrificing everything to this transcendent entity that you proclaim belief in? Have you cleansed yourself of all your sin, let's say? Are you making all the sacrifices that you need to make? Like, have you taken the moat out of your eye? I say I'm a Christian, but do I actually live like it? Am I all in? Buckle down with me for a second because I want you to take this seriously. You might have grown up in church. Maybe your your parents are Christians. Maybe you went, walked down an aisle and said a prayer at a youth conference. I want you to be honest with yourself. Do you know God? Do you know God? Don't dismiss this. Do you know God? Knowing about him isn't the same thing as knowing him. I think of Ray Comfort's analogy you're in a plane ready to skydive and you have a parachute right next to you knowing that the parachute exists and that it's there and that it has the ability to save you isn't the same thing as putting it on and jumping out you can understand that jesus is a savior you can understand that god exists you can understand that jesus died on the cross for your sins but until you put your faith in him until you trust in him you're not putting on the parachute and this is a gift of God. You can't do this on your own. You need to cry out to God to say, God, give me faith. Have you cleansed yourself of all your sin, let's say? Are you making all the sacrifices that you need to make? Although Jordan gives a good admonition towards Christians here, he's missing a fundamental piece. He says part of being consistent with this belief in God is cleansing yourself of your sins. But the truth is none of us can do this. It's an impossible request for us to rid ourselves of all the iniquity and sinfulness within us. It is only through Jesus and his payment on our behalf that we can be saved. True consistency here, here is not perfection, but rather submitting ourselves wholly to the God who saved us. I pray that Jordan Peterson would come to recognize that and that you would too. God bless and I'll see you next time.